Welcome to Sunday Prayer for the fourth Sunday of Easter. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. Christ the Good Shepherd, you call us by name and we know your voice. Bear with us as we do our best to listen. Patiently lead us as we try to follow and remind us of the hope we have even when life seems so difficult or even empty. Amen. A reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And a reading from the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many signs and wonders were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Amen. Thanks be to God. What's in a preposition? Quite a lot. These little words, so common in everyday language, have huge power to determine the meaning of what we say, and changing a preposition can make a big difference. As I read Psalm 23, I wonder if you noticed an unexpected preposition. When we sing, the Lord's my shepherd, we sing, yea, though I walk in death's dark veil. But the best recent translation says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, in becomes through. And what a difference that makes. If you are in, as we know so clearly at the moment, you're stuck. You're not going anywhere. If you are going through, there's an end in sight and a way to get there. Eventually, you'll emerge to something else. That's a message of hope. And I'm sure that that was what the psalmist wanted to give. No matter what we are in, we're going through it. It's not forever. It will change, and all the time we are going through, we are accompanied by God, who is with us. If you've been following the series on Acts in daily prayers, you'll already have heard that passage from Acts about the disciples holding all things in common. And you'll have already heard how, quite rapidly, things began to go wrong. In some ways, they were trying to do then what we are trying to do now. And it looks like they were experiencing similar emotions. A friend introduced me to a new word last week, Corona Coaster, the ups and downs of your mood during the pandemic. Just as we are experiencing ups and downs, so did the disciples. Going back to Easter and before, 
we can see foreboding, terror, grief, numbness and shock. Right after the resurrection, there was incomprehension and amazement, more fear, and then a time when life seemed to go back to normal. Those who went back to fishing in Galilee probably felt they were out of danger. The authorities didn't seem to be after them. So they got a bit more bold. They spoke up. Euphoria kicked in. This was great. Hundreds, thousands even, were flocking to them. There was the excitement of learning to live in new ways, of being part of a new community, of worshipping in new ways. But fairly quickly, cracks began to develop. They were no longer all of one mind. Having all things in common got too difficult. We too have had fear, which is still there. We too have had to learn to live our lives in very different ways, very quickly, from shopping to creating community online, even to worship. Undeniably, there was some excitement at first, maybe even a euphoria. But things are changing. The longer it goes on, the more difficult it is getting. Any little gains are being far outweighed by all the many losses. Little irritations are ballooning out of proportion. Patience is wearing thin. Self-discipline is slipping. People who are trying to work at home for the first time, teach their own children, look after elderly relatives, support their communities, find new jobs if they've been made redundant, completely change their businesses to meet radically changed demands, rely on benefits if they are out of work, or work all the hours there are to meet increased demands. All these people are getting exhausted. In truth, the weight of isolation is tiring to us all. The point is, as we've seen the early church going through an emotional process, what we are doing is going through an emotional process. In any process, things do not stay the same. Processes imply change, movement, going from one stage to another, though not necessarily in a predictable or logical order. It's about going through not remaining in. That's what we are doing. In all sorts of ways, each one unique to our own lives, we are going through this situation and we will come out the other end into something different and better. We've had ups and downs and there will be many more on the way, but it's not forever. Christ went through death into risen life. As a good shepherd, he leads the way, never leaving any of us behind. That is the hope we hold on to. That is the hope of the gospel. Let us pray. Shepherding God, in a dangerous world, let us hear your voice. We pray for the whole church and particularly for one another in our congregation. May we uphold one another in love and with patience. May we draw strength from your word and from our prayers. And even in our separation, may we feel connected with one another in the great fellowship of Christ's church. We pray for the earth, giving thanks that green pastures and still waters really do restore our souls. Giving thanks for the goodness of all that the land provides. We pray for the people of the world, because now, as never before in our lifetimes, we know how deeply we depend on one another, because as never before, we are united in one struggle. Through the wisdom of 
scientists and leaders, through the care of all health workers, through the selfless diligence of all who are working to support communities and life itself, bring us through this time. And when we emerge, let us honour those who have worked so hard and those who have suffered so much and those who have died by maintaining our unity of purpose for the good of all humanity and of all creation. We pray for all those in need, for those in want, for those who are ill and for those who are dying. We pray for ourselves, our families and those we love. May no one live in fear. May all dwell in your presence. In the words of the Good Shepherd we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. And the blessing of God, Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit be upon you all, this day and forevermore. Amen.